Hello and welcome. My name is Prasenjit and today we are going to discuss one of the case studies which are a part of the Google Cloud Platform uh, Solutions Architect Certification Exam. So uh, this case study is called the Helicopter Racing League case study and uh, this is one of the four case studies um, that is included in the Google Professional Cloud Architect uh, examination and you can expect about 10 questions from uh, these case study scenarios so understanding the case studies are important so what I am trying to do is uh, apart from you reading the case study from the official Google documents you will need to visualize that case study and build uh, the solution around this case study using various moving parts or resources from Google Cloud Platform so I'll try to help you visualize what this case study solution would look like so for that you will have to first go through the case study in detail but uh, I'll just sum it up for you so what is the helicopter racing league case study well helicopter racing league uh, is a fictitious gaming league uh, which is used as a case study here and the league holds various global and regional uh, racing competitions around the year and uh, it does a live streaming of the races all over the world and in this case study we'll see how the league leverages upon managed AI services and machine learning features offered by Google Cloud to increase their global fans engagement so that is uh, brief about what the case study is and uh, what do the helicopter racing league uh, people want they want to migrate their existing service to a new cloud platform and expand their AI and ML services to facilitate um, the race predictions and additionally as they will have new fans uh, engaging with sport particularly in emerging regions they want to move their content both real-time and recorded closer to their users so uh, it is a public cloud first company and uh, their mis mission critical applications currently run on the public cloud provider the video recording and editing is performed uh, at the racetracks and the content is encoded and transcoded where uh, needed and uh, that happens on the cloud and they have enterprise grade connectivity and local compute is provided by truck mounted mobile data centers and uh, uh, which obviously operate on the racetracks and wherever the games are going on and the race prediction services are hosted on the public cloud uh, or google cloud in this uh, for that matter and uh, the video encoding and transcoding are performed on the vms created for each of these jobs and the race predictions are performed using tensorflow uh, so this is the basic setup and uh, I have uh, created this, uh, this uh, diagram for you to understand. Now this is the basic uh, different moving parts and the different services at a high level. Uh, so the, uh, on the racetracks they will have a on-track data center from where the recording happens and then the editing happens and is fed into the services then we'll come in detail what each of these components does and why they are being used in this setup and how they uh, finally end up in the users uh, browsers or their mobile devices and streaming uh, applications TVs or players so we'll discuss how this flow works or how the batch data processing works from end to end and there is another component for the helicopter racing league that is the real-time video streaming so how that works on Google Cloud and what are the different components there so this is what uh, we will be discussing in today's uh, session about helicopter racing league case study so what are the various uh, products in Google Cloud that are going to be used in this uh, identifying these products and services are very important so that when answering the questions you will keep 
these products and services in mind uh, because these are required for the end goals to be achieved so obviously cloud storage buckets would be used uh, for storing season long race data with object lifecycle management policies uh, and uh, different tiers of cloud storage will be used based on the retention policies so that it is cost optimized and uh, cloud data flow or apache beam pipelines would be used for processing the data before storing them in the uh, big query analytics engine then uh, vertex ai or the ai platform on google cloud would be used uh, to deploy the existing tensorflow machine learning models and expose them to the partners and uh, uh, fr from the AI side natural language processing for predictions based on crowd sentiments would be done NLP and uh, we would have multi-regional Google Q Kubernetes engine clusters because as we read in the case study uh, uh, they, they would have regional as well as global presence so having a multi-regional GKE would be required here and uh, I'll also include the link to the official uh, uh, case study documentation in the uh, comments so that you can follow that if you have missed it and uh, cloud pub sub would be used for ingesting raw video streaming files to the transcoder APIs and cloud monitoring dashboards would be built to uh, reduce operational complexity and provide application insights. Uh, further than that, uh, online merchandise portal would be deployed on Google Cloud uh, Kubernetes Engine GKE to generate uh, merchandising revenue and GCP services like Cloud AM would allow the administrators to set up authorization and access control and finally uh, there would be various uh, machine learning um, uh, activities going on uh, in this setup so we'll come to that in a while so first of all let's understand the solution around the batch data processing so how to process the season long results from different games coming in so before you understand that just uh, go through this flow and embed that in your mind cloud storage cloud data flow bigquery ml and ai so for any batch processing this is the workflow when you are designing it on google cloud all the data is stored in the cloud storage or object storage buckets then using cloud data flow it is sent to the big query or transformed and then from big query it is fed to ml and ai platforms so that is basically something you can commit in mind so that in questions uh, you can fit different moving parts from google cloud into this flow so how does the batch processing solution work so to process the uh, helicopter racing league uh, uh, season long data the raw video files are streamed from the on track data centers which you can see on the left hand side here and uh, they are fed to a cloud pub sub uh, queue in real time and it triggers the transcoder api based on cloud functions trigger so it is just a serverless function that triggers and the transcoder uh, converts the video files into different formats which uh, is uh, simply it will transform it into different resolutions and frames per second because different users or end users would be using or watching the games uh, in different devices say I have an Android mobile phone a 6 inch or uh, I'm using a 11 inch iPad so my resolutions would differ or if I am watching the game on a TV which is a larger screen so different resolutions and frames per second would be suitable for different end user devices so this transcoder converts uh, the 
videos into different formats meant for different user devices that has to be uh, streamed into and thereafter the processed videos are stored in the cloud storage buckets for long-term storage and on the presentation layer uh, the website or the mobile app will fetch the video content from cloud storage and deliver it to end users but since the end users would be global so uh, a content delivery network or CDN would be used to cache the data to reduce latency and the server uh, content uh, the closest to the user's location also HTTP load balancers would be used to ensure maximum availability of services to the users across the world. So whenever uh, front-end services come into the picture, always think of HTTP load balancers. And if you are talking about uh, a global audience, then think of uh, these load balancers being global load balancers uh, and multi-region load balancers. So. Uh, this diagram and this session is basically to make your fundamentals strong. It's not a tutorial that y you will be made to cover every minute detail. For that you have to read the official documents and go through some of the good tutorials around. But uh, my purpose is just to make uh, you visualize what this case study looks like because reading a PDF from the official docs does not help certainly did not help me so I want to help you with that all right so for um, so that was for the streaming part and uh, for the analytics and predictions capability the videos are initially fed into cloud data flow pipelines for pre-processing and further it also uses video intelligence API to extract useful information from the videos uh, NLP API is used for natural language processing which is helpful in analyzing crowd sentiments based on the user comments uh, etc so you get the sentiment analysis there and all this analytical data is stored in uh, cloud BigQuery for generating analytical insights thereafter uh, the Vertex AI delivers useful predictions using the tens TensorFlow uh, machine learning modules based on analytical data that is available in this BigQuery. So that is how um, your uh, batch data processing works. So you can go through these arrows and easily understand how the processing takes place. So there are two components to this. One is the AI thing going on here and the other is the video streaming going on here and reaching the users. So AI is for internal analysis, sentiment analysis and recommendations and the streaming part is for the users to consume. So that is how batch data processing takes place here. And uh, next is uh, describing the solution of the real-time video streaming now uh, what does it look like here so let me explain you in a bit more detail so for the real-time video streaming the live event that is going on is recorded and edited and the RTMP RTSP feeds are uh, ingested into the AI streamer app engine and transcoding happens and it's stored in cloud storage and for real-time viewing or live viewing it is fed to CDN and through series of CDNs reaches the end users and uh, for those interested to know more uh, this uh, live streaming which happens uh, on the ground or uh, on the live stadiums where the event is going on the videos are captured 
uh, our audios uh, are captured there uh, uh, using an on truck data center. So you might have seen media houses or having these kind of trucks which uh, with their cameras and other equipment where they capture the video audio and then they stream it to a transcoder function as i said some time ago transcoder and, and encoders uh, uh, convert them into different video formats and resolutions uh, and then feed it into the cdn so basically this is what the helicopter uh, racing league uh, case study is and uh, you can pause the videos at various times and uh, spend some time looking at the diagrams to understand better and then you you'll be able to easily answer the questions uh, around this when you read deeply about uh, how this uh, setup works and what are the different moving parts and what each component does and what are the good practices so all the best uh, keep learning and you can drop me any questions that you have and uh, see you around next time thank you